All right, folks, I'm going to show you how to draw the big rim. Um, this is one of several parts um, that we use for practice going into the uh, SolidWorks certification. Um, this is, again, the first of many. I, I call this a level one kind of drawing. It's a pretty simple one to do uh, once you understand the, the basic concept of it. Uh, the first thing you just need to learn how to do is, one, when you're given a drawing sheet, learn how to break down the drawing and, and see what you're looking at. Um, again, if you don't have a great grasp on orthographic projection, um, that this is a lot harder. So making sure you understand what a top, a front, and a right side is, what an isometric is, um, understanding how to see through those panes or those, those uh, lenses, pieces of glass, uh, planes, whatever you uh, call them in, in your world, um, it just helps to visualize the product here. So um, you can see our isometric in the upper right hand corner. We have um, the big rim. This is going to be our end product. It's going to be made out of a material of 1060 alloy. And uh, we have two variables on this particular project. We have variable A and variable B. Um, I put the variables in here because we do change this up from time to time um, just to see if you're, you're able to create this without just uh, regurgitating uh, what I'm doing here. So making sure you understand how to plug in numbers where you need to plug in numbers. Um, so you can see A is 100 again. So if we look on our sheet, we can see A one, two, three times. Um, so we have to apply that at those dimension points and then we can find B one time right here um, for our overall diameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this and, and kind of show you how to actually create this. Um, so the main thing we're looking at is we can see the front plane here. Um, we can see a right plane. The right and the top are gonna to look exactly alike because this is a cylindrical object, a symmetrically cylindrical object. So the, the top and the right are gonna look exactly alike. Um, we can see a section line, section line A that's been cut right here. So if I do A to A and I find section A to A, that shows me this is what I'm looking at. So if I took this front view and I literally sliced it in half and showed you what the inside looked like, it would look like this. So from that section A, we can also see two other views. We see a, a detail C and a detail D. Detail C, that view over here, detail C. So it zooms in here. So what I like to think about with details is think about it like a magnifying glass. If I take a magnifying glass and lay it over this section view, the only thing I see is this piece right here. So you can actually see the curve down here is actually the same as the curve right here. So what you're seeing is this view planted up here. So we literally cut a little piece out, made it a little bit bigger so it's easier for you to view and so you can see it. Um, we did the same thing with D. So you can actually see that zoomed in view, put it up here. Uh, you can see I also changed the scale on this a little bit, uh, meaning that if this is one to one, meaning you're seeing it exactly how it's supposed to, this is one to four, meaning it's four times larger. You can see this is one to six. Okay, so it, six times larger than it, it, it appears to be over here. So this is how we actually zoom out and be able to see a little bit more detail on the object. And I, you can see the dimensions are placed on here as well. So we're going to use all these dimensions whenever we're, we're in here drawing it. Um, one of the things that I always try to teach um, anybody that's, that's learning SolidWorks is when you're drawing, the first two dimensions you always put on are your area dimensions, your length and your width, your biggest dimensions. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm going, okay, what are my biggest dimensions? What's my length? So I see this dimension here is B. It's 900. That's my biggest dimension. Okay, well, that's up and down. What's left to right? Well, that's A plus 40. Well, A is 100 plus 40. So my width is 140. Those would be the first two dimensions I put on before I put on anything else. Okay, it's going to help actually refine how we're actually uh, doing the process of dimensioning. So let's go ahead and start this one. So I'm going to go ahead and go File New, Part. Um, our, our dimensions for this are going to be an MMGS, so millimeters, grams, seconds. 
Um, we're going to end up weighing this in grams to make sure that we did it right. Um, I'm not going to show you that because that is one of the questions that you're going to have to answer after you create your part to see if you actually did this correctly. Um, and again, whenever I do that, I give you a range. So you got to be plus or minus so many grams to get so many points. Um, if you're not sure what that is, please look at the uh, rubric for how to actually uh, get your grade on that. So the right plane, sketch. I'm going to start this from the right because I really can't draw this from the front plane. It's, it's kind of impossible to cut out from the right plane, um, but I can draw, or sorry, from the front plane, but I can draw from the right plane. I'm going to start out with a center line that's vertical and infinite length and set it right on my origin. For, from here, I'm going to go ahead and use that dynamic mirror entities tool that I had showed you previously. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a line and start drawing. Now, when I draw this, I want to make sure I draw this um, kind of in proportion. So I know that the width is 140 overall. So I'm going to draw this first line. And I'm going to go roughly about 70. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm going to go about that. That way it keeps the proportion of what I'm doing kind of intact. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. This is about 100 coming in at an angle. Now, the one thing you have to avoid right here on this, and I can't stress this enough, um, SolidWorks is very intuitive. It's going to try to lock you on these angles, especially the 45 degrees. It's okay when you first start to use those, but really you want to try to avoid those if you know your angle is going to be different than a 45 because it will lock them in place and create constraints that you don't want. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. I'm going to go up, zoom out a little bit more. Now you can see as I'm starting to try to draw this angle here, one of the things that's happening, it's popping up these constraint lines. So you can see this one says parallel. Well, what's it parallel to? It's parallel to the orange line down towards the bottom. And if I try to draw that line right there, right now, it's going to constrain that to where I cannot change that going forward. So I want to make sure I avoid selecting directly on that. Over here, I'm going to go up about 45. Go in about 20, come down at an angle, and again, you can see it's using that perpendicular. And you can see the orange perpendicular line that it's going to be attached to, so we do not want to do that. So we want to come off of it just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in so I can do this a little bit easier. There we go. So now it's not attaching to so many things. Close it. Hit escape to get out of the command. And then there's our shape. Okay, and that looks pretty good. If I go back to my drawing here that looks pretty good and you can see this is my bottom horizontal line because this is the center point of the object that'd be like if I cut a line straight through here that's what I'm looking at this is the entire upper half so I'm looking pretty good right now so now I need to attach some dimensions so I'm going to go ahead and start out with that B it's the first one I want to put on and it's 900 however I only just drew half of this so I don't want to put 900, I want to put half of that. So I'm going to put 900 divided by 2. There we go, 450. Calculator built in is very handy. Okay, so then we have A plus 40. Any other widths up here? I got A plus 40, I got 60. That's the width of the inside piece. And then I got A. And I can also see an A divided by 2, which just simply means that this is a symmetrical line and that if I was to dimension that, this would be half of A. So we don't really need to put on this dimension, it's just simply showing you that this is symmetrical. So we have A plus 40, 60, and A. Let's go ahead and put on those three dimensions. So I'm gonna do this one first. A plus 40 was 100 plus 40. There we go. This one up here was 100. The middle one was 60. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Now you can see these points kind of squeezed in on me a little bit. Now if they get a little too tight, I've seen this happen before where they do this number. Okay, what you end up having to do is just grab them and move them in. You can, as long as they're blue, you can move these points around wherever you want to go. As soon as they're black, they're defined, meaning we cannot move that constraint anymore. Okay, other dimensions we need on here. So we have this one. We haven't put this 100 on yet. The 100 again is the same as the 200 over here. 200 showing the overall 
This is just showing to that center point, so that's 100. We have these 105s. I'm actually going to wait to put the angles on and on last. That's a pretty standard um, best practice procedure is putting the angles on last because it will make it easier once we get to, to that point. So I'm going to do this one at 100. There we go. And now I'm going to go up to the top. And at the top, you can see I got three different dimensions. I got 45 for the height here, I got 20 for the width there. I got this 30, which shows the height from this line to this line. Okay, so I'm going to do 45 here. I have 20 up here. And then it shows this line right here at 30. Now, the thing you want to avoid is this right here, where it does an aligned dimension, meaning it's parallel, runs parallel to the, the line itself. We actually want that as a vertical dimension. Okay, you can see that right there. That's a much different dimension, 32 and 28. Okay, so we want to make sure it matches what's on the actual drawing, and the drawing has a vertical dimension. Okay, so now all we have left are these blue lines. Those are our angles, so let's go ahead and throw those angles on. So I had this one at 105. This one was at 105. You can see they're turning black as I, I do them, meaning they're now defined. You can see this one right here. This one was 75. But the cool thing here is if you look at this, this is basically one big protractor. So if I put 75 on this side and I go ahead and do another dimension right there, you see how I have 105 and 75? Well, what does that equal? 180, and it looks just like a protractor, right? That's just how this works. It's simple geometry. All right, so we have all of our dimensions on. We're going to go Features, Revolve Boss Space, and we're going to revolve this thing. Now, axis of revolution, what are we rotating around? You can see it naturally highlighted that vertical. If I was to try to do that and select the objects to revolve it around, it ends up looking like this. Well, that wasn't really what we wanted. We wanted to rotate around this bottom horizontal line right here. Now, there we go. Now it's looking better. Now I got to select my other side, so I go back into selected contours. Select that other side. I got both of them selected. Good. Check mark. It's looking pretty good right there. We're going to add our material. So we just go over here to material where you right click. And this one I already said was 1060 alloy, so it's one of the standards. Select it. Then you're going to go ahead and go up to evaluate, hit mass properties. It's going to give you a mass. Now, again, I'm not going to tell you what the mass is um, because that is going to be a question on, on uh, your quiz here. So I'm not going to show you what that is for mine. But if you did this right, you're going to get 100% on it. So please make sure you're double checking your mask, double check your measurements um, to see if you got this one right. All right, good luck on that.